Welcome to part two of this D16 turbo series. And in this video, the plan is to fit the turbo. Uh, we'll get the lines in and also do the fabrication for the exhaust side. In the meantime, I'm still pulling some stuff off the car. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So one of the first upgrades we're doing to the car is the cooling system uh, to support the water cooling on the turbo side. So I'm just removing the radiator. We're fitting a larger size in. Actually, I can tell this has already been replaced. It's an automatic radiator. We're also removing the intake manifold so that we can get access to make our water and feed lines. All right, so the manifold removal was pretty straightforward, quite similar to the B-Series. And what you need to do is to remove pretty much all the coolant lines, your fuel feed, and also the return back uh, to the hard lines. Once you've done that, you've got all those studded nuts to remove. So you've got four on the top row and then three on the bottom row. The top row you can access from the top, the bottom row you can access the two ones on the side and the middle one you need to come through and access that from the top here. You can just fit in one of these ratchet wrenches uh, next to the vacuum hose. So yeah, pretty straightforward. And once you've done that, don't forget to loosen this bracket. You've got two bolts here you're gonna have to remove and then two on the bottom at the base of the block, which you'll need to loosen. And otherwise it just pulls off once the gasket is free. Okay, this is as bare as it's gonna get. And the D60 motor just looks so small in the engine bay. Plenty of room for activities. And I can't wait to tickle the motor with some boost. The AC system, you might have noticed, I have removed. So the compressor, the condenser, and the two lines going to the evaporator. Um, unfortunately, well, there's two reasons. The first being the flange that I bought for the discharge uh, puts a downpipe too close to the compressor. Um, so it's kind of hitting there unless I make some serious adjustments or make a completely custom flange. It's not going to work for now. And the second reason being the Haltech Elite 550 doesn't have enough analog inputs to run both the AC switch and also our temperature pressure sensor. Uh, so I've made the call to unwillingly remove the AC system for now, uh, but once the weather heats up in 2025, I promise we'll put it back in. Well, I promise myself I'll put it back in. Um, so now it's time to fit the turbo, and I have done a lot of background work on this because I did know that we needed to shave the block in two spots. Um, and I will show you that. So the first spot being on the bell housing here, you need to cut that back about 10 mil and the second spot being the webbing on the block right over there. So I will put some photos up. What you're shaving are parts of the block which will help with the strength of the block. Um, so just be very conservative, put the turbo on, make your markings, pull the turbo off, do a little bit of cutting and just keep repeating the process until everything is clearanced well. Um, so yeah, let's fit the turbo. So much room. So that's how it's gonna sit. The front cover looks so close to the block, but we do have enough clearance for a silicon joiner and also a hose clamp, uh, and we can still service the clutch system. So uh, yeah, I think it's in the right spot. I'm very happy with that. I don't smoke, but there is a blunt there. I have no idea where this came from, but we'll just put them back. Being the 2860, this turbo is both water-cooled and oil lubricated. So it's got four ports on the turbo, and we have to run our lines, oil and water, feed and return, from the engine. Now my original plan for the water side was to run my feed from the bottom of the radiator, so replacing the NPT petcock uh, and running a dash six line to the turbo. Uh, and actually it made a lot more sense because the lines were routed a lot neater. Uh, but I'm really glad I spoke to Grant from Honed who gave me some solid advice. He's given me another spot near the oil filter so that we get high pressure coolant straight after the water pump going to the turbo. The benefit of routing it this way is that the coolant's gonna to continue to flow through the turbo with the thermostat closed. So definitely beneficial in the colder months. Bit difficult to see, but under the second cylinder intake, 
there is a hex bolt down there somewhere. You might be able to see it right there. We're going to tap into that and that's going to be our water feed. Not sure what that fitting hex is. It's not a 22. I think it might be a 19. That's the one, bingo. 19 mil with a short extension. Okay. Oh, coolant all over the floor. It's got to be a block drain. No, not good. There's a lot of coolant. That's what we're after. Next is the water return back to the head. We are going to be installing the honed coolant spacer behind this upper neck. Now I've got both surfaces cleaned up. Just got a bit of Honda Bond to both surfaces. So yeah, Honda Bond on both surfaces. I'll let it sit about an hour and then we'll tighten it up. So this will be our Dash 6 water feed from the block drain, which sits on the back of the block. So this is gonna go back there and we're gonna run a Dash 6 line underneath that power steering line and then probably through that little hole there. I'll put protection around that line into a 90 degree fitting on the back of the turbo. And on the front side of the turbo, also another 90 degree back to the Hone coolant spacer. And I've got a Dash 6 uh, male flare there. So I've ordered a 120 degree hose end to make the line nice and kink free uh, and keep it nice and short. So I'm going to make those lines and I'll be right back with you. Got the water feed knocked out and we're just waiting for a, a fitting to come in. It's a 120 degree uh, hose end for the short return line from the turbo. Uh, and yeah, that's the water cooling side done. Let's move on to the oil lines. I think it's worth the time understanding and talking about the oil lubrication of a turbo. I have seen this done wrong, it's easy to get it wrong, um, and I have seen turbos fail as a result of not having sufficient oil feed and returns. Um, so, as I said before, this is the GT2860 RS. Um, it is a ball bearing style turbo, and different turbo manufacturers will have different uh, recommendations, different styles of bearings will also have different needs. So make sure you go back to the user manual uh, to get your turbo specific setup. Being water cooled and oil lubricated, we have four ports on the cartridge. We'll start with the oil feed. So this is the port for the oil feed and being a ball bearing style turbo, it needs to have a consistent oil pressure inside the cartridge. With oil pressure changing with engine RPM, we need to regulate the oil pressure between the oil feed line and the turbo. So one of the ways we do this is by using a restrictor fitting. So moving along, this is the water port here on the side. Now with the oil feed directly upwards and the oil return pointing downwards, you have both your water ports on the horizontal plane. Uh, I've put my dash six fittings there. At the bottom of the turbo facing directly down is our oil return. Now I'd say arguably that this is just as important as the feed and you'll notice that you've got a very large diameter outlet here uh, to return oil without any restriction back to the sump. And that's why we're going with a very large uh, dash 10 fitting. So thinking about the oil feed being a dash four, uh, our return is a dash 10 uh, back to the sump. We're gonna have a short hose free of any kinks, a free flowing hose back to the sump. And yeah, that's our other water port. So hopefully that gives you a good understanding of the oil lubrication side. Uh, it's worth spending a bit of time planning this setup and making sure it's done correctly. Now where we are gonna be getting the oil feed is literally right next to our water feed. So it's gonna make it quite nice to have both those lines running under the power steering hose and routed to the front of the bay to the turbo. So potentially we can probably put both those hoses inside a fire sleeve as well to insulate further 
from the heat of the manifold. Um, but back to the fitting here. Um, so we are gonna remove a uh, oil pressure sensor. It's more like an oil pressure switch, which runs to the cluster to let you know when oil pressure is low. So it's pretty much useless. What we're gonna do is remove that T into the block and I will show you guys how we're gonna do that. This is a 1/8 BSPT, which is the same thread as the factory oil pressure uh, switch. Uh, so we're gonna remove that, put this into the block. We have an NPT, 1/8 MPT uh, port here, and this end used to be a 1/8 BSPT female uh, port, and I put in a male flare, a dash four to a 1/8 BSPT uh, end for the oil feed. Um, so once that's into the block, we can put our sensor there. Uh, run the wires to the ECU and then run our oil feed to the turbo there. That's what's come out and that's what's going in. Okay, so normally I'd go in with like a, a tap, but I don't have a BSPT tap. Start it off by hand. Okay. From that fitting, it'll feed oil to the turbo and then from the turbo, it'll return back to the sump via a weld on fitting on the oil pan. And in order for us to do that, the oil pan is coming off for a second time. Earlier this afternoon, we got a fresh coat of paint on the oil pan and it is looking brand new. Uh, this is a satin black from Bunnings and it really blends in nicely with the OEM finish. Um, so yeah, I've got to get the pan back in the car. I've got a new gasket, got some Honda Bond. So once that's back in, we can finish the lines and hook them up to the turbo. This is how I like to do my oil pans. Uh, we're gonna be adding quite a bit of Honda Bond compared to what you might normally see. Uh, I actually got flamed by my mechanic kitty because I put too much on. But these pans are really old, so unless you're using a brand new pan, you're better safe than sorry. So just using a bit of wax and grease remover, just clean it up, make sure there's no oil. And then we're gonna start applying our Honda Bond. It's gonna be sitting in there like that. All right, just lay the seal there. We're gonna be using Honda Bond. We're gonna put a thin layer of Honda Bond, smooth it out, put the gasket on top, and then another layer of Honda Bond. And that's the way I like to seal up this pan. All right, gasket on top. Get it seated in those dowels. Cool. Better stuck than leaking. Got the oil pan in so we can make the return from the turbo there down to our dash 10 bung and the oil feed coming in the back of that T fitting. So we'll quickly smash that out and it should be all the lines done. So it's proper late now, but got those lines sorted. I want to show you guys this 120 degree fitting. This is the one I was talking about, we're waiting for. It's gonna go on the honed neck, returning water from the turbo back to the head. I also got the oil return knocked out. So this is the return, the thick dash 10 hose returning oil back to the sump. And of course, these two feed lines inside this Aeroflow heat sleeve. I'm using that to help with heat but also uh, because we are threading it through the power steering pump bracket, uh, it might help with some abrasion there. Uh, so yeah, got these lines knocked out and it's really late tonight, so I'm gonna head off to bed. Uh, but tomorrow I'm gonna fit those lines and then we can get onto the fabrication side for the turbo. All right, so just continuing on from last night and this whole exhaust side of this turbo kit is ready to go in. 
I've got the oil and water feeds hooked up. They're ready to go back to the back of the block. Um, and once this is bolted to the motor, it should need to come off again. And I've already gotten a new exhaust manifold gasket, got a new T25 gasket. Um, so once it's on there, it should be on there for good. And then we can start our fabrication. So I got all the lines in and I will give you guys a quick run through. We'll start from the feed. Uh, so remembering there was an oil pressure switch which runs to the cluster. I have replaced that with a Bosch temperature and pressure sensor. Uh, and got our dash 4 oil feed and our dash 6 water feed down there. So these hoses run together through the fire sleeve here and to the front of the block. Uh, where the turbo sits. So I've got both the feed lines on the turbo at the back and then I've got the water return back to the head and then the oil return uh, from our dash 10 turbo feeding down to our sump. Uh, and just around this area I've got fire sleeve going around everywhere just because um, yeah it's going to get a bit hot with the downpipe coming this way. Um, so I just want to insulate that a bit more. Uh, it really does help with keeping the heat down. So this afternoon I'm going to make a start on this downpipe and I'm not going to show you the whole process because to be honest it's a bit of work and it's a lot of custom fabrication. I will show you bits and pieces but it'll make sense uh, once it's done. So we're going to have to make a bit of a, a gnarly angle here. It's about a 135 degree bend down to our catalytic converter. So yeah, I'm going to make a start, show you guys when it's done. Alrighty, down pipe is done and I've also got the wideband sensor in there. This took a long time, uh, a couple of nights actually just back and forth between the car and the welding bench to get that perfect fitment. One of the ways to prevent your exhaust gaskets from blowing out is having a good fitting exhaust. Uh, and yeah, let's put that to the test and once this down pipe is in, we shouldn't have to pull it off again. Alright, got the dump on, let's have a look at the fitment. It is pretty much perfect. Pretty happy with that. And that's it for part two of this D16 turbo series. In this video, we pretty much sorted out the whole turbo side. We got our lines hooked up and we also fabricated our downpipe and matched it to the exhaust system. I know it's a bit boring, a bit bland, but it's quite important. And in the next video, we are gonna be upgrading our fueling side. So our fuel injectors, our fuel pump, uh, and also finish off some fabrication on the intercooler and the piping. So it's all coming together, it's getting a bit exciting now, so make sure you subscribe, stay tuned, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I will see you guys in the next video.